Hello and welcome back to Cynthia's Conversations. And today's topic, we'll be talking about growing up in a single household. You know, growing up with whether it's a single father or a single mother. So, but first, let me introduce my beautiful partner. On my right hand, I have the handsome Anthony. <laughs> and then on my left, first left, I have Andrew. And I. These two young guys here, they are the young entrepreneurs of Newport Southwest. And on my life, I have my friend, As usual. Amaka, you're welcome to the topic. Today's topic is, is really about how the children that have grown up in one single parent household, how the growing up affect them, or how they cope, you know, been with one parent in the family so pretty much this topic is about how them deal with will the <laughs> <We've single heard. laughs> parents, you know and just hear their perspective and how they plan for the future and how they um look forward to have their own family and what are the plans for the future so my first i'm going to ask anthony anthony how was it growing up in one single household to be honest with you, it was like, I didn't really know any difference until I got older. Because where I had two older sisters, I suppose they kind of like took me under the wing as well. And I had other like role models around me. So my dad not necessarily being in the house wasn't that big of a factor until later. And then when I started getting older and I started seeing like my other friends. You have to pause it. Yeah. Because look, Brian, we'll just edit. We'll edit that bit out. I try and look at the camera a yeah. bit more. Is she gone? <laughs> <laughs> She's hungry. Put her fed her first. Trish, are you coming in or are you staying? Because I'm, I'm going to go. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yes, but we're only with just said it. Yeah, we just said it. So, like I was saying, so you said your two sisters put you under the wing. Yeah, the like where I, where, where I suppose they kind of had a level of understanding being older than me. They kind of protected me in a sense, mm -hmm. and then it was only when I got older then, and me and Andrew and our friends, we would all like be out, and then we would, I would tend to notice like our relationships with our family and like not know, realizing who had like a dad in their house as well, and then mm -hmm. like comparing it to like my my household, and just realizing that like there is a difference, mm -hmm. but that difference isn't always a good thing because I'm very grateful to have like the mother that I have. Because I feel like if I had my dad in my household, I, I would be, there would be a level of like seriousness and like it would be a lot more strict when my mum gave me like more of a expression and to be express myself creatively and to be a lot more free. Whereas the relationship with my dad is he wants me to be a lot more like um, secure mm. where my mother would let me like kind of be who I am and like just have like my own path in a sense, you know. All right. Oh, that's amazing. And how old were you when, do you, do you remember when your dad left or your dad has never been there? My dad, the thing is with my dad, they were together and it's like, my dad always worked away. My yeah, dad, right. So, so like I always, that's why it's not, it didn't really like mm. hit me like that in a sense. It was only later on, on then I'm kind of like, oh, okay. He's like, not yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like there, was ah, still, okay. there was still that level of like communication, but like, the re I could see there was no relationship Should between like, between my parents, yeah. and it was like where, where I was used to him not being there. It just didn't affect me until later, until I could have my own thoughts and like yeah. digest digest it myself. Mm. Wow, you know. Yeah. So it's it's I I accept it for what it was, and I accept both of their decisions because I because I I'm my own person now, and mm. I can't allow that to like define me yeah. and define my um my path you know yeah but it's made me realize a lot about when i have children which i hope is not for a very long time no we're not ready I'm not. no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm ready I need i'm life. not ready I am no ready. no we're not ready i need to live life a little bit before that yeah, yeah. you have to yeah but yeah. when i do get to that level i want to be able to be there you know yeah. and also take what they both taught me and take what i know for myself Mm -hmm. and apply that to my children in a sense you know but i'm in a way i'm grateful to be brought up in a single I, yeah i'm grateful because i don't know any difference and i i appreciate and 
love the person that I am today. Amazing. Mm. Yeah. Good. Ogen, you know, <laughs> my son, you are my like. I wouldn't sometimes this video will start you know, finish next week. No, no, when sometimes <laughs> when people say, Oh, I really like the relationship between you and your son, I don't think I can even express with words how he has been my backbone because without him, I don't even think half of what I've done so far I will be able to achieve it. So and for a young boy it was a huge responsibility. To put in his shoulder mm. so sometimes i'm always saying son are you okay you know is everything all right and we talk really deeply you know we go as far as deep conversation and i've and if there is one thing that i've always taught my son from the one is the honesty to say son this is it and that is the truth you know i didn't hide anything from him but i want to know andrew how was it growing up with this this <laughs> mafia herself uh, it's tough. I think when you're younger, it's tough, man. It's tough man. for real, because it's tough because you don't really even you don't understand. It's just the emotion that you feel is anger, but you're not old enough to analyze or be able to even interpret how you feel properly because you start thinking, "Is it my fault?" You know, you see other families, you go see other people, especially like being in the UK. Like the differences between an African household, whereas predominantly if you go to white households, they you, you usually see the two parents. You know, there's mum, there's dad. Mm -hmm. This grandma's round the corner, you know, it's it's very everything is enclosed and they've been brought up with all this family orientated and you think why is it not the same? And I think when you when I was younger, that's my overriding feeling was just anger. I was just angry at the world, angry at the fact why is my dad not there, angry at you, like what for what reason is it gonna be me that has to experience this? And I think when you're younger as well, you cling on to like the false sense of hope. Because there was times my dad tried to reach out to me and said, I'm going to be here like this, I'm going to do this for you. And you would always tell me it's not going to happen, but you're so blinded by that false hope. And I was like, no, like, mum, you're just trying to spoil it. Like, he's going to come or he's going to do this. And it, it never happens, you know what I mean? And then it's on to the next time, it's on to the next time. And you just build up all this anger and this anger. And the daddy issues is such a thing, like, even, even now, there's still people that experience daddy issues and they don't understand that a lot of their their problems are underlined by this problem that they have mm. of this daddy because it's it's really deeply can affect people i think if it weren't for the fact that we were able to be so honest with each other and i always have someone to talk to i think it would have affected me much more than it did because after a while i think the roles reverse and it's like now obviously he's pursuing a relationship more than i like i, I don't need that anymore when i was younger i was actively like i wanted a father figure but now like i'm a grown man there's nothing some outside guy is gonna tell me that I haven't even learned or seen from myself or heard from you because you were my mom and my dad, you know, like you told me both sides of the coin, certain things where people probably learn from their dad, I learned both from you, yeah. you know. And I'm as Anthony said, I'm grateful for like the feminine touch because when I when we analyze how our friends that grew up in predominantly mm -hmm. masculine households and us, me and Anthony grew up in predominantly fem feminine households, is a bit different. I think like we have a different, yeah. uh, more of a softness, more of an understanding, yeah. I would say. Whereas when you grow up in a male household, there's a lot of ego, you know. If you have a lot of brothers, for example, there's a, there's a lot of guys and yeah. I wasn't really also, I wasn't really, there was no one for me to be compared to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was like, I'm the only son, you know, I'm the only, I'm the oldest here in the environment right now. So like I was the one trailblazing the path. I had no one that came before me yeah. that, oh, uh, why can't you be like this? Or why can't, which would be very, very difficult, I think. So I think it's tough, but if I look back, I wouldn't have it any other way because as I said- Do, do you, you ever have your dad in your life? Do you, was there ever a time- No, you no, lived? Because no. I think this situation would be different for people that probably grew up with a dad and then yeah. suddenly found themselves- But so I would you, always say I would rather have my father be absent um that yeah. be in my life and be problematic no, I'm about, did, were, were you ever no that maybe i'm not phrasing it right did, like maybe so you did you did you ever have it do you ever remember your parents ever living together no no i was never, too young never. i was too young that's, was so that's the difference because so, yeah. so i had no member i had no memory memories of them being everything together. i pieced together when i was younger and that's another thing you start to doubt or oh, like, can I really, not like not trust my mom, but it's like, okay, this is just one person's perspective. I, exactly. I can't hear right. the other side of the story. Mm -hmm. My mom told me X, Y, Z happened and it's like, okay, it's not like I don't believe you, 
but well, I want to see two sides of the story. Yeah, yeah. which is very right. You know what I mean? Which, like, that's all I was thinking of is like, okay, my mum might be right, but how does he feel about this? Yeah. And obviously, he had the opportunity because I did see him. Um, and I sat there and I said, he had nothing. Well, you were that much older. Yeah, I was, a little bit. When we first went to I was about 13. Yeah, you were that much older. Yeah, so much so older. So your opinions then. would have formed. By yeah, then. yeah, yeah. By then, I already by then, had an I idea. Mean, idea, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. a bit, which is why. Now, which is why I also asked you, how old were you yeah. when your parents I think I was sort of around, I think I was 15. Like, so you knew your parents together, but you said your dad was always away? My dad, the, the situation was, it was like he worked away for six weeks, he would be there for six weeks in a sense. Uh, so it was like where I was also getting into my own life and like going into high school and whatnot, I was focused on me. And then when he wasn't there, it was kind of like, I noticed it, but where I was also growing up and getting my own freedom and going out with friends, I kind of had that to like focus on in a sense. Like fair enough, when I was like like eight or like uh, like much younger, and not having him there would have been a lot different. So was sense. he there when you were about eight years yeah, old? Yeah, yeah. Like mm. that's what I mean. Like me and my dad, we have a great relationship. Mm. It's just mm. growing up in the same house as him. That's what mm. I tend to think about. If anything, you know, like I could phone my dad now, you know, but it's um. It's just interesting because I feel like as a friendship group, all of us, we have such different like family dynamics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, but I think we all have like such a level of like acceptance and like understanding. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to be honest, like it's kind of awkward when I go into when I would go to like a friend's house and there'd be a dad there. I'm so used to like going in and, and being, just a mum. Yeah, and being, being like a mum there and just being like, hello, you follow me? Like a very like feminine vibe. Mm. You know, like all, like always, always, and it doesn't matter about like race or anything, really. Yeah. It's like mm -hmm. from like I remember just being like my friend Finba just stayed over his house in like year seven, and it would just be like his mum, and I'm like I'm used to this in a sense, yeah. you know. Mm. Yeah. Do you are you very protective of your mum and your sister like Andrew does? Oh my God, Andrew. Like I am, him. I am now, but being the youngest at the time, where I was like a bit mm. the baby, mm. but like it's like now it's kind of like flipped, and I'm <laughs> the adult in a sense. Where well, your right? sisters have been left home. Um, the oldest have, and then the one is just two years older than me, but she's going to university like next year, so she's oh, yeah. still at home. Okay. But um, yeah, now now I feel like, not necessarily for my older sister, because she's like out of the picture, but I am like the male in my household, yeah. and, you know, and it's like, yeah. after um, spending that time in Berlin with Andrew, and then coming back, and like, realizing like, oh yeah, like, you haven't had like a male in the house for like, <laughs> five, like for like two <laughs> months, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. you know, having that like balance. Yeah. And it was it's just interesting and having like the awareness that I do and like viewing things the way I do, yeah. I can't I can't like I have nothing towards anyone. Like my mother and dad's relationship ended but like my relationship with them hasn't. Absolutely, know? yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, I I just accept them for what they are and like I want them both to be happy, you know. Yeah. So what would you would you have done anything differently? Would you boys have done anything differently? Um Maybe if I had like a level of awareness, I would have spoke more out about it because but where I was young and I wasn't the oldest and I was all right. I was probably protected by a lot of things from my just siblings yeah. because they wanted to, yeah. like, me to just live life and not yeah. have any stress or any yeah. worries. Yeah. But if I had the awareness, I'd probably be like, I, t I talk about it, I express myself. But now, yeah. now I feel like me and Andrew, out of all of us, like our, our friends, we're the ones growing up with women, like we're the ones like put it out there in a sense you know our emotions and how we feel yeah and i'm very grateful for that i'm absolutely happy for that you know yeah you would you have done anything different, would you have done anything anything different? different? yeah i would have just not been so angry about it yeah because it was as i said but where the thing is it, it was not that that was the main issue is like you're coming to the uk it's a new country i have to learn a new language and then that was just like a like an adult i'm learning about my sisters with the disabilities and then it's like, oh, it just so happens that also my dad is, is blah, 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 blah. Mm. So it's like the everything. combination of everything mm -hmm. on me as mm -hmm. from so young just made me like, like hollow. I just didn't know what to do with this pent up emotion because I just didn't understand and I didn't understand. So if I was to do anything different, I would let go and I wouldn't be so hopeful because yeah. it, it was, it was wasted. I don't, I don't know if was... <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being hopeful. There's, There's nothing, nothing wrong, but obviously now that I can look back on it, my hope was was wasted, and that's probably just the not. Fact of probably the not. Probably not. I don't know. I think the hope 
kept you going. They going, yes. There's nothing wrong me, enough because... But said, you know, probably it didn't turn out the way you hoped for it to be. But he taught you a life lesson. Yeah, yeah. You see, that's the yeah. thing that I... He taught you a life lesson. And I always said to people, if you're going to walk away from your children at the age of, you know, three, four, five years old, but bear in mind, then if you add 10 years to that three years, that child is 13. Yeah. You can't treat a 13 years old child like a three years yeah. old. Because they are they are older and they are wiser. And and the thing with life itself is it's like a puzzle. It will get to a point that these children will put the puzzles together. Mm. Even as much as you try to hide it and you try to you know, tell them the opposite, they will find out. It takes a while, but they will get to know the real picture of what happened and how it happens. You know, so if you have children in future, <laughs> you yeah, I mean, I always said I'm a, my relationship history is a bit sticky, to be honest. <laughs> but like, regardless of that, I know. Very sticky. I know. Super sticky. <laughs> I am very, very I know, sticky. I know, but I know in my um, heart. I wonder who is like. Hey! I'm, I'm not saying anything, people. What did you do? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, regardless though, I always I know in my heart that I think I think Brandy and Brenda I would say help massively because from when Brand like these times I have felt that they almost like they're my children like not in a weird yeah. way but like where I have actually nurtured them from the ground up yeah. so I know I'll that face. regardless like regardless of my relationship with whether it's my wife I have a child with or whatever my relationship is to the woman I know my child will never feel the burden of like that relationship yeah. even if things end terribly between me and the woman I will always be there for my child because I, I, I know how it feels you know and it's not it's, it shouldn't even be a choice it shouldn't even be a conversation it's just your responsibility full stop you know regardless if if you're gonna get yourself in a situation and the woman says, okay, we're having this child, that is your child. Like, no, yeah, but what no happens is, because there's some single parent household that the woman doesn't want the man to have anything to do with the child. So what would you do if... But that can't happen. It's, it's simple. It's, 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 it's you go to court that, for it. Yeah, that's my and child. You have same. to fight for your child. Yeah, that's you my see? child the yeah, same you know, way There is so many avenues to do that. You go to court yeah, and fight it, for it. it. You, you and then you fight it. for it and they let the judge decide. It still doesn't stop the woman from being a single parent. From the child still growing up a single parent. Yeah, but, yeah, but we'll, your relationship with the child then is completely different to what you have. You and that will, only, that will only affect the child. Because if the child can grow up and see you and so resist, he's the child's going to start asking why can't you let that see me blah 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 and then she yeah. will have to justify and explain her decisions to that child and that child is going to get yeah. to a certain age where they're going to be able to make their own decision do you know what i mean True. yeah so unless i'm some kind of abusive father or whatever which is not going to happen i see no reason why my yeah, my wife should stop remain, me like just remain solid i suppose in yeah. these situations towards your child and for me personally like whatever relationship i have with like the mother of my child i would hope it's always on a good terms, whether we don't see eye to eye or we're not in love or anything like that. Because I see like raising a child is almost like a business and you have to like, you have to invest that time. You, know? yeah, that's true, uh, that's you have to invest that time. There will be no picking up bag, I'm going. You know, yeah. like, like Andrew does, you know, check the ticket first, book it before thing. oh, where am I sleeping? <laughs> when you have a child that is gone. Mm -hmm. you know? Not for like the next 10 years. Oh, please, uh, yes, it's better that you way. Need to, you need to, I feel like you need to be spiritually, men mentally, physically, financially, like, ready for that. Yeah. Yeah. You can never be financially ready for a child. But at least yeah. as financially ready, ready as you life. possibly can be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, at least, at the very least. Because having children now is... is yeah, uh, it's, I want to be like the person I'm supposed to be when yeah, I'm a child. Yeah, 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 I want to yeah. have lived my life and... Well, oh. mistakes do happen. Yeah, of course. Of course but, hey, man. Uh, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> hey, you two. There ain't no mistake happening anytime <laughs> soon. Ah, Anthony, come uh, on. Uh, mistakes do happen. No, 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 no. In those two cases, there will be no Andrew. No mistakes. Me, me and Until, well, we got too much stuff yeah, to do. Man. Yeah, yeah, you know. Even just a relationship alone yeah. without the kid, I, I have too much yeah, stuff to do. Yeah, you know, yeah. you guys, your new music, the video is amazing. So anything right. in the pipeline at the moment? Working, we need, yeah. We just, I'm, I've been focused on him more than myself. And he's like my manager, yeah. Right now, he's two like my managers. My 
My mom's like my emotional manager, <laughs> Anthony's like my, you know, my, my artistic manager. <laughs> Yeah, he, yeah, we need to keep him on the Yeah, on the that's what I'm trying. I'm trying. There's probably. so many baggages all over our right leg. So many distractions, son. Hey, <laughs> let's brush it, brush it, brush it. <laughs> we got to brush that I away know. for now. Okay, focus, please. focus, son. I'm trying. Focus. I'm trying, I'm trying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that makes sense. You know, I'm it's trying. been an amazing topic and it's absolutely joyful to have you two. Because sometimes I always wonder, son. Yeah, I can say how hard it was for me to bring all my children by myself, how difficult it was. But I really, really want to hear you get perspective of it to have to put up with me, you know. <laughs> Even as a friend, it's difficult, so. So, you know, this sexy face, you know. Your, your mom still has it. She's jealous, she's just yeah. jealous. You know, so sometimes I always say that, because... I think I expect so much from Andrew. I just want him to be at 23, got your degree, do this and do that. But sometimes I kind of forgot that, you know, he's a young man who has to learn from his own mistake as well. Yeah. So, and I'm glad I have to have you people perspective. But still, we fight all the time anyway. So don't think <laughs> we're all smiling now. Do you fight with a mom? No. Horror. No, we're very no, young. Really. I don't know, we're very like just at peace. Cause I'm just I mean I'm, you're the younger son yeah. yes we you're got, the like, baby I, yeah I'm the baby he's the man that's what I mean it's so, it's funny it's different yeah it's funny to see that dynamic and even like yeah. in our friendship you know where I've where he's been like a leader in the house and I've kind of just been chilling in a sense <laughs> yeah when you got out there so he becomes a baby and then you <laughs> no, well it's like it, it's just funny and like when we spent that time together in Berlin and it just seeing like okay like the di the dynamics of dynamics of the friendship now yeah. you feel me like mm. yeah it was interesting oh it's amazing and it's been you know an amazing to have you guys and uh, like i've always said if anyone have any topic that wants us to discuss you are welcome to leave a comment or write us through our social media and thanks to my beautiful panel anthony andrew and my this has been the most serious one we've had with Bob. We can be serious sometimes though. <laughs> my half mad ass friends. Thanks for coming. And till next time, see you guys again. Bye. Bye. Thank you.